looks good, looks good. Take it away. Oh. Okay, so this session is basically on vectors um, and the way that Hadley Wickham referred to it in chapter three of the advanced R is the vector family in R. So there's two types of uh, vectors and they've also considered null in like the bracket, but it's not actually classed as a vector. So a little bit like Pluto. Was it a planet? Was it not a planet type thing? So yeah, null is not a vector, um, but null is special because it has a unique type um, and its length is always zero. So therefore it can't have attributes attached to it. Now, when we talk about a vector, we're mainly talking about atomic and the list. Now, understanding the attribute and the link that that has to an to the vector. So when we talk about an attribute, it's kind of an object that can be attached to a vector. So when we look at an attribute, we're basically saying that we can attach a list of metadata to that vector. Um, the main attributes that we kind of look at in R are dimensions and class. Now, the dimension attribute takes a vector and can convert it into a matrix and an array. Then a class is a different type of attribute and that can that is related to the S3 object system. Now we cover that more in chapter 13 of this book. Um, so overall, in a nutshell, we're looking at vectors. You've got two main types of vectors, which are atomic and list. You can apply attributes to these vectors in the form of dimensions and classes. And then there's another non vector, but is also considered as special and that's null. And that's because it can have the length zero but it can't have any attributes attached to it and then that's what this little diagram here kind of shows now in total you've got four main atomic vectors um, you've got logical integer double and character now these are probably all quite common to you guys now so the individual value for each of those four primary atomic vectors are called scalars. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so for logical, you've got true or false. For integer, they're written like doubles, but they have an L at the end of it. Um, a double, you can have it as a, a decimal number, scientific number, or a hexadecimal number. And then you've also got characters. So a character is a string surrounded by the double doubles or the singles. Um, there's also two really rare types of atomic vectors, and that's complex and raw. Now, there isn't much attention to detail played um, in chapter three of this. Um, and Hadley Wickham kind of basically said that that's because they're not really used very often for statistical purposes. So you just kind of need to know that they're rare and you can find out more about them in R by doing question mark complex and question mark raw and obviously using the help pages. So when we look at a vector, um, so just coming out of the character double integer logical, um, which are types of atomic vectors, um, you can create multiple of them using the C, so continate, um, which kind of groups multiple individual vectors together. Um, then you can look at the type of vector, which will tell you if it is a character, a double or an integer or a logical. Um, and then you can also use length to see how long that vector is. Um, and then if you wanted to find missing values within a vector, you'd use is.na. There are just some functions there, which you are probably quite common of. I think the purpose of this kind of chapter and doing this book is to understand what's going on behind the scenes in R, which is what we covered last week. Then you've got the vector hierarchy. So what this means is if you are trying to combine two different types of vectors, so let's say a double and an integer, um, a character and a logical, you wouldn't be able to do that because the vector needs to be the same type. 
So R will basically say, mm -mm -mm, that's not happening. This is the rules. If you're trying to combine a character and a double, that's not going to happen. You're going to have two characters instead, and it'll turn your double into a character. So I've copied this exercise from it because I thought this was like the most numerical type of coding challenge that I could kind of get from the resources in this chapter. So it's quite um, conceptual kind of stuff. But I did look at chapter four and that's got a lot more coding type things in. So that will be a good one when we move on to that. So here in the exercise, I've just copied these over. I don't know if you can see my cursor. So I've got C um, one comma false. So first of all, I'm just going to identify what these kind of vectors are. Um, so this one here is a double. This one here is a double. That one's a logical, a logical again, a character and an integer. And an integer is pretty much the same as a double, but it's followed by an L, which we covered in an earlier slide. So here I've kind of made a reference to the vector hierarchy. And what I mean by that, which is important for this exercise, is that what we're showing is that one overrides another. So a character has more kind of weight than a double. A double has more weight than an integer. An integer has more weight than a logical. So the next step would be to say, right, so this one here, if we ran this first line of code here, what would it give us? And it would give us two doubles. So it would give us C1, comma, zero. And the reason it would give us zero is because false numerically is a zero. Um, so it turned into a double. Then here, because a character overrides a double, we'd have C open bracket A in, in um, speech marks, then we'd have comma and we'd have one in speech marks as well. So it would be two characters there. Then this one here, an integer overrides a logical. So we'd have one L comma one L. Um, so this one would be two doubles. This one would be two characters and this one would be two integers and that's what that vector would would go to then if we use the type of function it would tell us the overall one um so when we when we're looking at these different things so like a vector you use different kind of um functions to pull that part of that structure so when you when, when we're using these atomic vectors we don't really use them as the single vectors that they are we use them as matrices arrays um, factors now the re the way they get to those vectors is by adding an, an attribute now they look at an attribute as a name value pair um, and it basically contains metadata and it applies that metadata to an object um, and then if you add a dimension attribute to that vector, you've then got a two dimensional matrix or a multi dimensional array. Now, when you're dealing with a matrix and array, the functions that you use are going to change. So instead of using length to know how many um, how many there is within that vector, um, how many objects within that vector, you'll use n row or n col to get the number of rows and the number of columns within that matrix. So now we're moving on to S3 atomic vectors. Now, when we talk about S3 atomic vectors, so I'm just going to move this so you can see this diagram here because it's super, super good. So you've got vector, then a vector goes into an, at a, an atomic is a type of vector. Then you've got your four new four atomic vectors, logical, integer, double and character. Then you've got four different things now. Um, four important S3 vectors. So these are no longer atomic vectors. These are S3 vectors. Um, and these are still related to your primary atomic vectors. So your logical, your integer, your W and character, which is kind of signified by these arrows here. Um, and what these are is it's basically adding a class or, an, uh, or a dimensional attribute which turns that object into an S3 object. Now, this is important because what happens is it changes the way that that kind of object um, reacts to a function. So if you if you applied a function to just an object, it would act different compared to when you applied the same function to an S3 object. 
So we can see this, for example, when many of you, I'm sure you've been in this boat, but when you first start coding in R, you've got rows of um, observations. You've put your data frame into R and you had, let's say you had people's names, but it didn't add a new, it, those names were categorical data. So therefore there were kind of, there were characters, but R automatically turns that into a factor. So it records the levels as a factor vector. Um, and then the other types of ones are dates, which are saved as a date vector. Then you've got date time, which is stored as a this vector here, which is POSI XCT. And then you've got durations, which are diff time vectors. Now, durations are only used when you're looking at the, the, the difference between two dates vectors or two date time vectors and then you can get the difference. So that's super handy if you want to see a difference in temperature between two dates. Or the number of days, that's a better example. So when we look at factors, um, you can use it to get a count of all your categories, um, which is super, super handy because sometimes you might have different bug names, um, different species, and you might want to know how many numbers of each species that you've got because each row represents data or an observation from that that individual animal um, but you might have multiple species multiple of the same animal that group into the same species um, now as i mentioned in the second bullet point before base r automatically changes your character vector into a factor um, which you might not you might not want that to happen then also with a factor, you can order your factors so you can you can kind of apply your own hierarchy with low, medium, high. Um, date vectors are kind of it's kind of like an attribute on top of a double vector. So you've gone from having your atomic vector, then you are having your double vector, which is a type of atomic vector, and then you're having your date vector. So it's kind of like stacks up, so it kind of builds and creates a new object. Um, this date dash time ob um, vector is built on top of double vectors again, but it's a different representation of time, a different way of measuring it. Um, and then your durations is built on top of doubles again. Um, and the units, you can determine the units. So from my own experience with this, you can say, Oh, do you want your date time? Do you want your durations? Do you want them to be in hours? Do you want them to be in days? Do you want them to be in weeks? Do you want them to be in months? So you can specify the units on that um, on how it should be kind of interpreted. So now this is like nearing the end um, when we look at lists, date frame and triples. So we've got a vector and we had if we just go right up to this diagram. Oh. You've got two different types of vectors. You've got atomic and you've got list. So we've covered atomic um, and we've just we've seen which ones are numeric, which are integer and double. And then we've seen which ones that aren't uh, numeric atomic vectors, which are characters and logical. So now we move on to the list. Now, the the difference between a list and a ve atomic vector, so a list vector instead of atomic vector, is that you are not restricted by the type so you can have any type of, of um, a vector there and with this this is what allows you to create a data frame or a triple um, a list can be made using the function list open brackets um, and sometimes they're referred to recursive vectors because a list can contain lists so a list of lists of lists then moving on to data frame and triples, when we look at data frames and triples, they are built on top of lists and data frames automatically transform non syntactic names and triples do not. Now, the reason I put that comment in there is because I wanted to kind of focus a little bit on the difference between data frames and triples. And the reason was because data frames were, when R was built, data frames were built for that purpose all those time ago. Now, Tribbles is something that they created to improve the functionality of a data frame, but it's still different. So, and one of the things is that a data frame 
automatically transforms non-syntactic names, but a triples does not. Now, when we look at non-syntactic names, which we covered in chapter two, which was basically if it had an underscore in front of it or something like that, so it wouldn't actually be recognised as, you know, an ID or uh, the number of days in in the growing season or something like that as a variable. Now, they created tribbles to kind of remove that thing, but then saying that, in the last year that I've been doing little bits of data science, I've never used a triple really knowingly, um, I don't think. But it does kind of show it in your environment a little bit similar to the way compared to if you looked at it in a data frame. Can I uh, object for just a moment? Yeah, good for Ed. This, uh, I just want one thing that um, you've said triples very many times, and I will let a couple of them pass. <laughs> but I've, I've put some pictures of triples in the chat if anyone is interested. From a from a classic Star Trek episode, it's the trouble with tribbles. Oh, if I spot, am I am I pronouncing it wrong? Is it tibbles? It is actually tibbles. Tibbles. <laughs> but I, oh. I did find that humorous because of that Star Trek episode. But it's a Sorry. Tough, it's it's a weird word to call for a data for data frame, and it's a weird word to replace it. But it's it's a pun that's only funny to uh, the kind of pun that's only funny to programmers. And the uh, it's a pun on the word table, and they just call it tibble uh, as a table. And one of the main motivations for making a new data frame object is that it has a few amenities for displaying the header as a table. So I I just thought I'd say that I, I actually avoid tibbles a lot because uh, it requires a little bit of extra code, sometimes just a few extra characters to do the same thing I might do with them in um, in R. But having said that, um, they do work very, very well with all of the um, ggplot and, and all of the proper um, uh, tidyverse stuff. But it, yeah, it is tibble, not tribble. <laughs> Thank you. I, I copied this part as my next slide because I thought this is kind of shows you the difference between them. Here you're having to you specify in your X and your Y for a data frame. You're doing the same with the triple, but then you've got this string of code that you have to use, this line of code that you have to use for a data frame, and it says string as factors. And what that basically means is we don't want A, B, C, so this column, this um, column Y, so variable Y, to be converted to a factor. We just want it to be a, a, a character. Um, and then here it's kind of interpreted as a data frame, three observations of two variables, whereas as a triple, it just looks as it as a three by two table with two um, variables type things. Um, now, the X, the quizzes for this are just like so conceptual, um, but I kind of thought it would be fun for everyone to have a go anyway, because I kind of have tried to cover the answers to the questions within the slides. Um, so hopefully, uh, you will all be successful on the quiz questions. So you've got kind of 10 minutes, just have a go at them, um, just scribble your notes down, and then we can go through it on the next slide. I see, um, I thought I would just say, it was great. I mean, thank you, George. Uh, I thought I would just say a word for a few people that may just dip into some of these meetings is that um, the theme for this meeting in case you didn't catch it in the email, was to uh, to read a chapter in the um, in the uh, advanced star book. It's a free and open source book, and the link is up on the the main page, which I'll drop a link now in the um, in the chat. <clears throat> and so, if you're having trouble answering these, you can you could just um, browse the the book while we while we do it. Let me just find link to the book. Oops, I did have it in the email. Let me navigate to my own email here. I'll just put that so that people can, um, can go there if they need to and want to. Uh, you might beat me to it. <clears throat> I've just now got to my email. <laughs>
think that's a link to the to the book chapter that we read for this week. <clears throat> Thanks, George, for sending that. Okay, so we take a few minutes and uh, try to answer those questions. If you'll pop them back up on the screen. Oh, sorry. I just saw the email at you before I forget. Well, thank you. OK, cool. Thank you. We'll just take uh, take uh, 10 minutes. Is that OK? <clears throat> if anybody has a question or wants to talk about it in real time or we can wait to talk about it at the end, just just unmute and yell.
Is everyone happy to go through the queues? All good here. Everybody speak up if you want a few more minutes. <clears throat> Right, does anyone want to volunteer to answer the first one? Okie dokie, I shall go through it. So the four common types of atomic vectors are character, double, integer and logical. The character is like, for example, chips, but you'd put it in speech brackets. The double is a number, so it can be 5, 10, 15, could be 0 0.2 as a decimal, or it could be scientific number. Um, and the integer can be a number, exactly like a double, but it's got an L on the end. And then you can also have logical, which is true or false, or T and F. Then you can have two rare types, which are complex and raw. So did everyone, hopefully everybody got that and found that OK. Now the next one, what are attributes and how do you get them and set them? So attributes are arbitrary metadata. So it's something that you assign to an object, um, which then creates an S3 object. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, S3 object system will be referred to in chapter 13 of this, of this book. Um, how do you get them and set them? So you can get them and set them through two different functions you can use. Well, yeah, A double T R or attributes open bracket, close bracket. Um, and you can do using the A double T R, you can use two different types. And um, you can just put it inside the brackets with the X and then the Y in um speech marks or you can assign it like you'd assign um, a, a, a column to a data frame type thing. Um, question number three, how is a list different from an atomic vector? How is a matrix different from a data frame? So an atomic vector we know is the same. A list is not the same type. So it's not the same type um, and that's what's different between a list vector and an atomic vector. How is a matrix different from a data frame? A matrix is the same. It's not an atomic vector, but it's got the same types as an atomic vector. Um, and a data frame is a bit like the list. You can have multiple types because you can have different types in different columns, hence why it's a data frame. Um, question number four. Can you have a list that is a matrix? Can a data frame have a column that is a matrix? So a list, can, can you have a list that is a matrix? Can a data frame have a column that is a matrix? So yes, you can create a list that is a matrix and a data frame, can a data frame have a column that is a matrix? Yes, a matrix can exist within a data frame as a column. Um, and you do that by assigning. So let's say if you wanted um, you wanted to turn the number of days in data frame A into a matrix, you'd have DF dollar sign number of days, and then you'd assign it and you'd do matrix open bracket, and then you'd establish what that what that data set is. Number five, how do tibbles behave differently from data frames? So the, the one that I've written down is that tibbles never change strings to factors. And by that, I mean that if I have a, a, a variable within my data frame that ha is class character, so type character vector, then it doesn't turn it into a factor automatically. Um, it just exists as a character if it's a tibbles and obviously exists as a factor if it's a data frame but if i use the string as factors equals false then the data frame also won't won't change that so if i look at the solutions oh i've not left enough room by the looks of it for this one 
Oh, there we go. Um, so yeah, it just kind of explains it in more detail exactly from the from the book. This is the A double T R um, function. Um, and there's the attributes with open bracket, close bracket. Um, here, yeah, you can make a list array by by assigning the dimensions. So dimensions is an attribute. Remember the two attributes are dimensions in class. Um, we add them to our vectors uh, to get our S3 objects. Um, and you can make a matrix column of a data frame by assigning. So here, data frame, so that's what I was saying, my data frame A, my X, I refer to that as the number of days, and I'm assigning it to the matrix. Um, the other method that you can use as well is by using the I, um, but I've never, I've never done that. And then further things to compare and trip tibbles and data frames is the enhanced print method. Now, I think what it means by that is that a tibbles only actually shows the first 10 rows of the data uh, of the of the data whereas a data frame if you print the data frame it will just show the show as much as possible um and the other word it has stricter subsetting methods now the next chapter is about subsetting but for those who don't know what what we mean by that we mean by taking out variables that we want or taking out a certain row of data um, and that's what we mean by subsetting so the, the functions that we use for a data frame um, to subset it will be different functions that we use for a tibbles to, to subset it. So yeah, that's all I've got. I hope it was useful and I hope it provided some background information um, to the stuff that we kind of do most days. That was cool, George. Uh, I thought this chapter was easier than the last chapter. Yes, so did I, but I think it's because we're familiar with it. So like we're used to dealing with vectors, whereas non-syntactic names was like, was a new word for me, but so was Tibbles to be fair. Any uh, any comments here? I, I think <clears throat> like uh, I really enjoy going through these chapters myself because they're, I've learned something from the these two chapters. You know, there are little bits of things in there that that I can learn from too, and that's nice. Um, but it's, I think, a, a formalization of stuff that we take for granted a lot when we when we use R. And I can even forgive the bias towards the tidyverse and ggplot <laughs> for that reason. <clears throat> One of the things we need to decide here is if we want more of this particular book. That was a thing we were testing. Um, I do have the next few meetings set up to, I'm going to go ahead and stop this recording now. Thank you. Thank you again, George. Um, I have the new next few meetings 